Hey, it's Todd and Aaron with the Daily Stream, or we like to call that, yeah, the Daily Stream on Gephardt. Daily. Dot com. It doesn't matter what you do, you cannot screw up anywhere as badly as they did last night in the Academy oh. Awards. Was that the most epic thing ever? Seriously, we're sitting here, we're eating popcorn. Oh, yeah, yeah just this like, is us. This is us. Going, I'll, I'll yeah. keep going, that's fine. Yeah, and this happened. This, there's a mistake. Moonlight, you guys won Best Picture. Moonlight won. Come on, this is not a joke. This is not a joke. I'm afraid they read the wrong thing. This is not a joke. Moonlight has won Best Picture. Moonlight, Best Picture. And look, he turns the card around. He turns the card and around. And it's card. Moonlight. Oh. Standing ovation. Now, here's the deal. Jordan no, wait, wait. Horowitz. Look at this. So both casts are on stage right now. Hugging, freaking out. People are taking hugs back, I guess. It's beautiful. No, but Jordan Horowitz is the poor man, uh, the balding gentleman who's the holding left. the best ask Oscar trophy. Right. And he's the one who has to say, uh, this was a mistake. I, I, I don't know what happened, but here, this actually belongs to our friends from Moonlight. And the thing that was so pretty about it, though, is he says, it is my honor to give this to you. He says, right. because we travel together so much promoting our films. And I can't even imagine how gracious uh. you would have to be to take everything back and then handle it that way. And the thing that was nice about it, Moonlight had really no promotion at all. Have you heard about it? No. And we pay somewhat attention. But the thing that's interesting about this, people are like, oh, they didn't get their due. But they did actually get a chance to sit and talk and thank each other and thank their moms and dads and their right. kids and God and everybody else. And because it was so weird and it was such a mix up, they're actually gonna get a ton more promotion for this. So this could be sort of a blessing in disguise for Moonlight because it is a beautiful film. But whose fault was it? This is the statement from... Price Waterhouse. Okay. Right. He said, they're an accounting firm, and if they're your accountant, you're going to prison. Just okay. want to give you a heads up. Well, at least they threw themselves on the sword. They said, we sincerely apologize to Moonlight, La La Land, Warren Beatty, Faye Dunaway, and the Oscar viewers for the error that was made during the award announcement for Best Picture. The presenters had mistakenly been given the wrong category envelope, and when discovered, was immediately corrected. We are currently investigating how this could have happened, and we oh. deeply regret that this occurred. And it does make a little sense, because if you remember when Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway are standing there, right. and he opens it up and he looks confused, and she goes, oh, you, and she pulls it away. They had been given Emma Stone's nominate, uh, Best Actress nomination again oh, that's for right. La La Land. So oh. they saw La La Land, and they're like, okay, Emma, uh, okay, La La Land. And so, I mean, Warren, to his credit, tried to come back out and go, I... I at this least he went back out there. Happened, right? now, now, it's like a Steve Harvey moment, right? With um, uh, Miss Universe. Oh, that was so brutal. But did you see? I was like so worried about the Oscars. And when he was so gracious and said, I would like to present this to the other directors and stuff. It was amazing. As opposed to Miss Universe, where they actually walked over and grabbed the crown and lifted it off her head. It wasn't really I mean, even lifting. It was more like a yank. Oh, man. I cannot believe that. So, I mean, other than the most epic moment of the night, uh, Best Actor Award went to Casey Affleck. You know, you know he um, he uh, has always been really quiet. He actually displayed animation, which kind of frightened right? me. Because right, Because he was, like, getting all excited, and he said that he had learned how to act by watching Denzel Washington, and they did this close-up of Denzel and his wife, and he's... Okay, thank you, I think. <laughs> but he smiled, he was excited, he was gracious, and you and I have never been able to interview him without getting, what, three words it, from Yeah, him? it's like, da-da-da, how was this thing? And he answers, yeah. Yep. And he was smiling, and right. he had a man bun, right. and he clearly hadn't groomed, and yet he was still excited. Now, well, Best Actress, Emma Stone, I was so happy for her, because I was kind of hoping that Ryan Gosling would win for Best Actor, but she won for Best Actress, and she thanked Ryan. She said, it was yeah. wonderful to do this to you, with you. She <laughs> to thanked, you, but, yeah. Either Screw or. you out of an Oscar, that's ah. what that is. And the youngest director in Oscar history won for La La Land, so that was really cool. But she was beautiful. I mean, she was incredibly gracious yeah. and sweet, and she was so excited. And it really made a difference. I mean, I don't know. Between the two of them, I thought they were absolutely beautiful. And I was so happy for her. But she did have the sweetest expression when they had the whole mix-up with Moonlight and La La Land, where she's, like, scooting over, and she's trying to pull some of the Moonlight actresses right. over, like, get in the camera frame. Get in so right. I can see you. So I no one will even think about Jimmy Kimmel because, because and that was he so was hilarious. Sad. And, yeah, especially hilarious. when he had the tour bus. They had gotten a tour bus of people who, I guess, were tourists. Oh, they saw And it. they wanted to do the maps of the stars. Right. And they brought them out instead. Oh, and remember the drop of all the cakes? The airdrops? 
Little I would, parachutes, That was donuts. so cool. Yeah. How much cooler can you be? All right. All right. Weather now, outside is bad. I know. And unfortunately, you're going to have snow all day long. They're already talking about snow tires and chains in the canyons. So I think we should probably go to Daisy. She'll give us a little bit more information. It's brought to you by Hillside Tire and Sandy right off 106 South. Good morning, Todd and Aaron. Here's what's making news on GebhardtDaily.com. The search is intensifying for a missing airplane carrying an LDS bishop from Sandy and his two small children. Randall Wells was returning to Salt Lake from Phoenix, where he was last heard from Saturday night near Bryce Canyon. Search teams from five southern Utah counties are taking part in the rescue effort. And residents in West Valley still in a state of shock after waking up Sunday morning to find their cars had been torched. Police say five vehicles were burned and several others burglarized near 3100 South and 3800 West. At least two homes also damaged by the fires. And now a look at traffic and weather brought to you by our glorious sponsors at Hillside Tire. Hillside Tire with six locations along the Wasatch Front. Some tough sledding ahead for Utah drivers as a winter storm warning is now in effect through early Tuesday. For parts of central and northern Utah, a couple of inches of snow are expected on the valley floors, up to 16 inches expected in the higher elevations. UDOT says both the morning and evening commutes will be a challenge. That's what's making headlines at this hour on the morning stream. For the latest in news and entertainment, go to GebhardDaily.com. Todd and Aaron, back to you. Thank you, Teeny Tiny Daisy. That was brought to you by the Law Offices of Robert J. DeBry. All right, I did something kind of mean to Aaron. Are you um, ready to apologize now? So I went to this favorite restaurant that we have, and, uh, and uh, I got a pizza because it's the pie pizzeria. And I saw something that people were getting, and it was really different and there came a warning with it what is it with you and food based on a dare <laughs> why can't we just have a, a proper meal uh, see i'm like a six uh, one to ten i'm like a six for heat and you're like a negative one pretty much yeah but you like wasabi that's different that involves sushi everyone knows the what difference fish there. makes it cooler no Precisely. anyway so uh, we went there the other day and this is what i put aaron through Hey, it's Todd and Aaron here for GephardDaily.com. When it comes to pizza, the pie is the only place, the only place in Utah where you take yeah, your wait, friends. Yeah, but wait, wait. There is something diabolical going on, and we're going to go test it out. Let's something go. dark. Let's go. I thought it was way too hot. Thank you very much. Including the unpleasant effects of diarrhea and we're vomiting. Water doesn't help, by the way. No, water doesn't help. More beef and more linguine on it. Is that helping you? There's a lingering effect, the fiery effect. If you wake up at four in the morning, you remember the waiver you signed. Burns on, burns on, burns on both ends. <laughs> Several years ago, my little brother ordered an actual raw ghost pepper through the mail. Palmer's the co-owner and the chef at the Pie Pizzeria, and he is the man with the plan when it comes to menu items. And I thought it'd be funny to, to put it in some biscuits, and instead of people like hating it and being mad at me, they loved it. Palmer says it was this event that inspired a fiery culinary creation. It's actually not a pie, it's a special dough, and uh, it's called the Apocalypto. <laughs> no oil, we grind them up, they're ground up ghost peppers. Now, ghost peppers, according to Pepperhead.com, are the seventh hottest peppers in the world. They come in at over a million SHU, or Scoville heat units. Now, to compare, a jalapeno comes in at only 8,000. Our uh, cooks actually wear masks and gloves when they make this pizza dough. In fact, this dough is so hot, you have to sign a waiver before it even touches your lips. And could trigger stronger intestinal contractions and discomfort. But Palmer did not ignore taste for the sake of spiciness. It actually makes the food taste better. I mean, the heat of it is actually pretty mild. You can get a pizza, you can get calzone. Um, probably the hottest form is the breadsticks, the pull-aparts. Yeah, those are coming out of the oven here real soon. After a little egging on, we decided to give it a shot. Look so Bob. See? How you doing, hon? You feel the endorphins? <laughs> I went to cheat, so I brought some milk. There you go. Right out of the jug. Both of you are sweating, you know that, right? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the glow. It was painfully delicious, but I could only get through two bites. Regular patrons like Isaac Hart say, I thought it was a little too gimmicky and too hot, but the recipe has tamed a little bit. At first we, we did different things which, which made it too hot. We wanted it to be hot enough <laughs> that it would live up to the name, but not so hot that people wouldn't order it. Believe it or not, people actually love it. Well, there you go. That wasn't so bad. Are you kidding? No. All right, this is the Apocalypto, and you can only get it at the pie, all the locations, and this is the ghost pepper 
crust that probably has finished off my esophagus. Cheers. All right, so what killed me about this and what caught my eye was it the, the, the disclaimer. The, that you had to sign a release. It's so funny. So anyway, I, I enjoyed it. I didn't think it was. The first bite wasn't too bad, but, but I tapped right. out after two. That but, was, and I'm really grateful because I had to power chug that entire pint of milk you brought with you. Yeah, and so, and thank so you. it gets hotter and hotter as you eat. And I think you wouldn't do it again. No. I think I could do maybe four pieces because I ate how many sticks? No, you had you had like four breadsticks. Right. So the question is, is uh -huh. knowing what you consumed yesterday, right. how have you been this morning? Oh, I see. Uh, well, I've started praying again. Well, that's good. <laughs> that's, that's very inspiring. Make this go away. Okay, now let's make you really hungry with something that's utterly glorious. And I'm talking, of course, about nothing bundt cakes. If you've never had a nothing bundt cake, I'm so sorry, you haven't lived. It's 10389 South State Street in Sandy, uh, right across from Southtown Mall. And you go in and these glorious bun <coughs> cakes are rich and they're dense and they're wonderful. Nothing like those cheesy <coughs> hard ones that maybe your aunt brought to your family picnic when you were a kid. And then there's amazing petals of rich, thick cream cheese frosting. And it's like chocolate, chocolate chip, there's red velvet, there's lemon, um, pecan did, did, praline, cinnamon swirl. Did you mention that? I find empty boxes in the basement. Okay, this is the one thing I will hide from you. And, not little and I boxes, have no morals whatsoever. But also, April can deliver anywhere along the Wasatch Front, and there's all kinds of wonderful swag there, too, for everything from adorable little cake plates to aprons to recipe cards and more. So it's Nothing But Cakes, 10389 South State Street in Sandy. All right, so we got to talk the other day because the Beatles are coming to town, uh, Weber State, and they're going to be. Uh, so. Here's the funny thing. This, this is, is cool. This They're, is the Fab Four that's been around longer than the actual so Fab be, Four. Right, exactly. And they're called Rain, and they've been touring the country for years and years and years, and they are incredible at what they do. And we had a chance to talk to them yesterday. I want to hold your hand. I want to hold your hand. All right, this is Rain, a tribute uh, to the Beatles, and you guys have been around for how long? Uh, the group has been around for boy, 38 years, I think. Longer than the Beatles but, themselves. That's amazing. Yeah. When you reinterpret some of the music, how, how does it impact you? What, what makes you focus more on one song or another? Or what do you want to change or alter to make it more meaningful to today? Do you know what I mean? It kind of speaks for itself. I mean, the music is timeless, and this is one of the greatest rock albums ever made. Um, it's the first concept album ever made. Um, so people really relate to so many things in the songs as you, as we do. You know, we're we're super fans first before we even take the stage dressed as them. So we share so much in common with the audience. One of the most interesting things about performing as the Beatles, do you go through like, is there an artistic side to this that's more actor than musician? Do you have to like channel part of who you are? The the costuming, by the way, is is incredibly right on. By the way, I was looking at some of the videos and it's unbelievable. We hope you will enjoy the show. We were kind of curious because you know, especially since you are focusing on the 50th anniversary of the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, we actually have the daughter here of the man and woman who designed the actual album cover, and we kind of wanted to introduce Daisy. Daisy. Come on over. Come on over, baby. Hello, guys. Scoot in. Can you see them? Can we switch it so we can see them? Oh, there she is. Hi. <laughs> what do you think, Daisy? Fantastic. Your accents are good. Did you find that accent you, hard Tom. to do, the Liverpool? No. No, you know, it's... at the Beatles store. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't very expensive. And, you know, you watch a lot of YouTube and stuff like that. So it just kind of comes naturally. Have you boys played in Liverpool? We're actually playing a week at the Palladium in London in October. Oh, gosh, that's going to yeah. be fun. That's I know. a gorgeous place. You're going to love it. I know. I can't wait. I'm so excited. So, Daisy, any insights on, on the character of the early Beatles during that time that you could give them that might enrich the performance? Oh, yeah. I will, I will tell you something very important, actually. You boys know that Paul's not dead, right? Well, Paul said it best, didn't he? You know, when, when asked, are, are, you, are you dead? No one told me.
Okay, Rain takes the stage tomorrow night. That's Tuesday, February 28th at the Estad Auditorium on Weber State, uh, of course, up in Ogden. Um, now, the tickets range from 20 to 50 bucks. I would pay anything just to see that kid play Paul with the big feathered hat again. Right. That was freaking it's epic. It's incredible. You can check them out online. Um, also, I just realized why three of them were wearing hats. Why? Because they have the mop tops. Oh, that's right. Is there any other way to style a mop top? No. Pretty much that's all so. you got. Now, it's interesting because we were talking about Jan Howarth. This is Daisy's mom. Right. And she and uh, Daisy's father were this the ones who designed the Sgt. Pepper Lonely Hearts Club Band album, album cover. cover. Now, Epic. Now, Epic. These are the people who were basically the Andy Warhol of London at the time. And the concept that we've got teeny tiny Daisy here and her mom and is her actually mom. here in Salt Lake City. So and we're going to let you talk. To, uh, they're going to talk to us. And we're going to do that right after this. Merit Medical. Why work for fast food wages when you can start at Merit for a whole lot more? Merit Medical. Great products, great people, a great company. Learn more at merit.com forward slash careers. The law offices of Robert J. DeBry and Associates with offices in Salt Lake City, Sandy City, and St. George. Check them out at robertdebry.com. Precision Garage Door of Salt Lake City, providing repairs, new garage door installation, as well as openers. Precision Garage Door, locally owned, nationally backed. Give them a call at 888-712-3667. <laughs> Todd and Aaron here with the morning stream on GetPartDaily.com. Okay, I'm going to hear more about Jan Howard. This is Daisy's mom so cool. and the Sgt. Pepper Lonely Hearts Club Band album cover. But first, let's go to teeny tiny Daisy in the Get Part newsroom. She's got some information for this morning to get you to work. Thanks, Todd and Erin. Here's what's making news right now on GebhardDaily.com. If you think spring is just around the corner, you might want to think again. A winter storm warning is now in effect for much of central and northern Utah. Up to a foot and a half of snow is expected in the mountains, up to four inches on the valley floors. Monday's morning and afternoon commutes could be a challenge. The UHP says give yourself plenty of time to get where you're going. And the search continues for a missing airplane carrying an LDS bishop from Sandy and his two small children. Randall Wells was flying to Salt Lake from Phoenix when he was last heard from Saturday night near the town of Panguitch. Search teams from five southern Utah counties are taking part in the rescue effort. That's what's making news at this hour. For more headlines, go to GebhardDaily.com 24-7. Todd and Aaron, back to you. All right, so this is the coolest thing. Sergeant... Pepper's Lonely Heart Club Band, the, the album cover. I mean, I can see it in my head right now. Well, Daisy's mom, I, we have to call her mom because she's British. Jan Howarth actually lives here in Salt Lake City. She's the artistic director right. down at the Leonardo. Did you know that they actually gave her the key to the city last year for her artistic achievements? How come we don't have it? I don't think oh, what, we have that many artistic accomplishments, where, Where's sweetie. the mural? Oh, now, she made a beautiful mural. It's 250 South and 4th West. Hang on. Next time you drive by, can you picture it? Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. right. And so her mom's a tagger. She tagged kinda, the wall. Kind of. Yeah. In a cool, artistic way. All right. Anyway, Teeny Tiny Daisy got to interview her own mom, and this is what she had to say about the album. The Sgt. Pepper cover uh, was 1967, and um, Peter, Blake, and myself were asked by the Beatles, um, would we design the cover? We met with them and talked through ideas and constructed this, this concept. Peter had the idea of making a crowd behind them. I had the idea that I didn't want a graphic designer to put any lettering on it, so I wanted it done in the flowers um, and on the drum. I think Peter first thought he would do it as a collage, and I suggested that we did it as a set, because coming from the kind of Hollywood mindset, I thought it was nice to have the Beatles walk in and you take a photograph of the whole um, you know, uh, situation as, as a live thing. So that's the way we did it. That piece um, came together you know, with all sorts of lurches and problems and so forth about, you know, John wanted to put uh, Jesus Christ on there and Hitler. And both Peter and I thought that was, you know, not, not a good uh, way to go. And, um, you know, we had a shift in the fact that I was going to put some of my figures in the front row 
but we really wanted to have um, Madame Tussauds figures because they were far more realistic and we didn't know if we could get Tussauds until the very last minute. In fact, we did and we got these wonderful wax works that made the front row. The conceit was that in the film industry, you have a, a small distance and you want to create uh, a fabrication of something. You can do photographs and then put a three-dimensional frontage on that that makes the photographs look as though they're real. So it was a it wasn't looking amazingly real, but that was kind of part of it, that it was a kind of faux Hollywood set. Oh, that was, that, that's just incredible. You know, the thing that's so amazing to me is... I get a tattoo of that. If I did that, <laughs> I'd put a tattoo, well, I'd find some place for it, but I would have a tattoo on my body, and then I would have gotten them to sign it. Insisted on walking around it. shirtless yeah. just to point it out. Yeah. It's interesting, Teeny Tiny Daisy was showing me some pictures from when she was a, a little girl. Oh, I saw and some of those. she's running around on the beach. Did you realize who the guy was the in guy, the background? The guy with a nose. It was Pete freaking Townsend right. from The Who. Because, you know, we like to hang out at the beach. Uh, she she yeah. hung out with Pete Townsend as a child. And we can only hang out with Bill Gephardt. So. Well, it's almost as good, right? Oh, by the way, if you've missed any of this today, it's so easy to find us again. You can either go to GetPartDaily.com, the Todd and Aaron Facebook page. Uh, we're also on, on Todd and Aaron YouTube, SoundCloud. Um, it's, it's pretty simple. We'll come to your house and make you dinner if you ask. Okay, we okay. have finally found a way to date, even though we're poor. What? We oh. go hide in the basement with oh, Netflix. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, everybody, the term uh, Netflix and chill. Uh, in our case, it's Netflix and go to sleep. Yeah, but, pretty much. Yeah. So here's the deal. So this is what we do for date nights. We take my little iPad and we go downstairs. We started watching uh, on Netflix and we started watching a brand new show, which I absolutely love because it's Drew Barrymore and she's actually the producer. Right? You have a little crush on her and I'm okay with that. It's called the Santa Clarita Diet. I love it. The minute I saw the ad for it, I just died laughing because it looks like it's a Nutrisystem commercial. You have to see this. All right, here it is. Everyone is asking me, how is it that I feel younger, more energetic, and sexier than I have in years? It's the Santa Clarita diet. After the first day, I knew this wasn't like any other diet. I satisfy all my cravings and eat whoever I want. And I only eat the foods that deserve it. Mmm, this one was a real bird. Ready to take your life to a whole new level of wow? The Santa Clarita diet. The first month is free. You know, it's just <laughs> the whole cast is great, by the way. Timothy whole, Oliphant plays her husband. He was in Justified on FX. What else? A Grinders. Yeah. And he always has this, like, frightened, like, stunned look like, but we're certified realtors. <laughs> It'll be okay, dear. Because oh, he always so has funny. to. Because oh. he has to kill people for her now. And the daughter. Daughter's great. So, She's anyway, darling. here's the problem. And I know a lot of people binge watch and stuff. And so we fell upon this. And we watched the first show. Then we watch the second show, like everybody out third, fourth, we're like, this is great. It's developing. We're watching it in order, you know, and we noticed that Drew Barrymore is starting to get a little hotter. Yeah, they made her hair bigger and she started wearing more darker eye makeup. Oh, it's like Sigourney Weaver, right? In uh, Ghostbusters. Remember yeah. when she turned into the creature? Zool. It was like, Ugh. So, um, <laughs> so anyway, episode seven, eight, eight, nine, ten, nothing. And we're both sitting in here thinking, well, do we have to wait till next Sunday? When is it We were going to wait right downstairs in the basement, but no, it's not on. It's It, it was over. It's it, done. There, and we felt... Violated? Betrayed? Jilted. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. a little PTSD here. No, because we were invested and it's gone now. I and know. It's like, well, but... And so someone said, you're an idiot. You never binge watch a first season because it, it leaves you nowhere to go. Right, right. And so so what you, you ask people on Well, this. we're on Facebook Live right now, and so I was basically saying, so what's your thought? What do you guys do? What do you... Mm -hmm. What do you watch? One cute girl, Jan said that she watches Arrow. She did mention the tights, so she binge watches that, I guess, for the you know, look, fitting clothing. You're going to be a superhero. Tights, you don't want to put the package out there because people are, like, throwing, like, darts at you and stuff. So a shield, Captain America's got it right. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., that's actually the one I love. The oh, Marvel right. Universe, and besides right. that, you know perfectly well right. that if we wait long enough right. for this season... Eventually, Chris Hemsworth will show up as Thor, and all my dreams will come true. Chris, I'm here for you. You, me, I'm here. As long as I'm you don't waiting for you. As long as you don't yell his name out. Okay, okay that's <laughs> what else? Crazy ex-girlfriend. This is funny. Steve said that you would love this one, and I don't think we've had a chance to see it. I think it's What's another it called? one of the Netflix originals. What's it called? Crazy ex-girlfriend. I had one of those, mm -hmm. and then I married her.
That was so stupid. Yeah, I know. Are you even the slightest bit embarrassed? Not a bit. You no. should be. Orange is the New Black. I've heard about that one a lot. Yeah. HBO. We really should watch that. Right. Oh, Game of Thrones. I feel so bad for Yala. She said, I came to Game of Thrones just last season, and she had watched the whole thing, so she was intrigued. Oh, wait a minute. Again at the wait beginning. a minute. She went back to the beginning? And she said it was horrible because all the questions had been answered. She's like, I know Cal Drogo's going to die. I know what's going to happen. That's like that's like uh, watching the pilot. Jon Snow comes back. Right. You know, so it's like a betrayal. She she said, but she still watched them, but she was oh, bitter about it. That's crazy. <laughs> All right, so anyway, we recommend the show. It's really good, and uh, uh, go watch it, and then you're going to feel like uh, you've been jilted. All right, now, if you're just joining us here on the Todd and Aaron morning stream on GephardDaily.com, we're coming back tomorrow with some really cool stuff. Number one, we're talking to Bill. He's been up at the Huntsman Cancer oh, Institute. I, I had no idea that that has moved on so quickly with curing cancer. And we're These talking about child, kids. Childhood cancers, they say they can cure 80% of them now. 80 Percent. Did Is you that know that? I didn't thing? know that. So that's going to be an interesting. Thing and you know, he's a grandpa, about. so he got totally verklempt. So I can hardly wait to hear what he says about it. And, and of then course, we have a cat. I know. Wait, hold it. Wait for it. A cat who survived Katrina. Hurricane Katrina. And it's the cat who belongs to our news director, Patrick. And I am dying to have this because. How, did, how did you get that cat? Did you go? He went to New Orleans. I don't know what he did. But. This is Patrick. Anything could have happened. That's true. It would likely involve prison, but let's right. not ask. But the important thing is Jennifer Martin's going to be here on Wednesday. Is she? she is a pet psychic. Dun, 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 dun. And it's really cool to watch her with these animals. She's actually read Gil, our dog, before. But I'm dying to find out what happened to the cat. Really? I'm yeah. dying to find out what happens at home with Patrick. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Make sure you join us. Once again, if you missed anything today, GephardDaily.com. You can go to our YouTube channel. That's Todd and Aaron. Any of our Facebook pages will still have the Facebook Live there. We're All here right. for you. 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. I do a mic drop, but they warned me if I did, they would take my money away. So there, we'll see you tomorrow morning <laughs> at 7. <laughs>